Hello friends. Happy Wednesday. I am pretty excited because I am about to load up for the first time this beautiful pipe. You might recognize the the design. This is I don't know if you're gonna be able to read that, but this is the doodler. Uh, Tracy Benser product post custom built if I'm not mistaken I'm not 100% up on the history but I've always admired these it's a gimmick pipe you know they you know, have this sort of radiator design where they've carved out these channels and then they drill holes down through them and supposedly that's gonna keep it cool it'll certainly not get hot on your hand but given that wall thickness it's probably not gonna get hot on your hand anyway Anyway, I've always liked them. Uh, I know it's a gimmick. I don't think they're gonna smoke. It's gonna smoke any different. But uh, I was fortunate enough to get this pipe from uh, our buddy Jim at CJP Pipe Rescue. Uh, the the work he did on this was just fantastic. I'm very very impressed. It it essentially looks like you no. Know, I mean, you could barely tell that this was smoked. I mean, looking in the tobacco chamber is the only way you'd know. The exterior is, is like a new pipe and I cannot wait to light it up. So I'm going to fill it up with some Haunted Bookshop. If you're looking for a, an estate pipe, keep an eye out for, for Jim's estate pipes. Uh, he puts up uh, what he calls adoption notices on YouTube quite frequently. They show up on Instagram. Uh, keep an eye out. The man does fantastic work. Uh, and the pipes are well priced too. So you and he he doesn't he doesn't work on junk. He's he's always got nice high quality pipes that he's restoring and, and selling. He puts a lot of effort into looking for them in the first place. So you know you're getting a quality product. I'd much rather deal with someone like Jim than go through eBay. I always love the first bowl out of an estate pipe because you, you don't know what to expect, but these often have been smoked, you know, quite quite a bit, and a lot of the work is done for you already. I should have gone in done a little bit more uh, research on the, the history here. Uh, in terms of when this was made, I'm, I'm guessing we're talking about the 1950s, but I'd have to confirm that. I just don't remember. I knew at one point. But, as we all know, my mind is like Swiss cheese these days. Very nice. I'm really glad to be able to share this first smoke with you. So, beyond this pipe, I got other pipes to show you today. Um, so, this Saturday, we're going to do a, uh, a giveaway live stream Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we're going to do a little different. I'm going to actually, I've decided to sort of expand the trivia. What I've been doing is asking one question and taking like the fourth correct answer and that guy wins something. Well, I decided that we're going to make it a little bit more competitive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have three questions and the first person to get the correct answer on each of those three questions moves on to a final round where just those three people are allowed to answer the question. And then there will be a series of another three questions. And the... Actually, you know what? We better make it four questions. So there can't be any ties. <laughs> and then the, the, the best out of, uh, out of four will win the prize. So I think through the numbers a bit there, but that's, that's the basic idea. I think it'll be fun. I think it'll... It'll get people some more, you know... 
recognition than just having their name called and said, hey, you, you won. You know, let, let's get them to answer a couple more questions and, and interact a bit. Uh, should be fun. So let, let's see how that goes this, this Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern. And the prize is going to be this. And this is, in my opinion, a really beautiful example of a Canadian. Uh, let's see, it's oval shank, tapered stem, nice, fairly, um, fairly large. Uh, let's see, I can almost get my thumb in there. And the bowl's about yay deep. It, it's, um, well engineered. The only issue that I have with it is there's a couple of a couple of little dents on the stem that I haven't gotten out yet and maybe I'll between the time we have the the uh, the, the game I guess we'd call it the contest to, to see who wins this and I mail it out maybe I'll be able to get rid of some of those uh, dings but they're not terrible. Just a, just a few little probably it was dropped at some point or something. But they're, they're they're pretty minor cosmetic details. Uh, grain is pretty nice. You got some some bird's eye coming through. Uh, really not bad. Unfortunately, the only markings on it are imported briar, so I have no idea who made it. But it does appear to be well made. The chamber is drilled a bit high, so that's uh, another concern. But why focus on the negatives? It's going to smoke just fine, and it's a uh, it's a beautiful shape. And you can win it just by answering a couple of trivia questions. So, if you're interested in potentially owning this pipe, tune in Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern. There'll be a uh, notification out later today, or I think I'm supposed to call them... Somebody suggested I call them coming attractions, so <laughs> we'll do coming attractions. Uh, that'll, that'll go out later today, as well as a coming attractions or notification for the Friday night uh, virtual pipe club, uh, which is just going to be a standard Friday night virtual pipe club. So I hope to see you there, 8 p.m. Friday night. Now the other pipe that I wanted to show you, and I hope uh, the owner of this pipe doesn't mind me showing this, but I, I, I think there's a lesson to be learned here. So this is a this is a butchakan, and I'm not going to put that all the way in. But this is a horn horn extension on the end of the pipe. So that would actually be lining up, you know, something like that. And then of course the stem. That's the mortise for the uh, the tenon on the stem. So it's made. There's a mortise in the briar, and then there's a tenon made out of the uh, the horn that goes in there, and it's obviously a very tight fit. Actually, too tight because it cracked the the shank, and I'll have to fix that uh, and make it a little bit less tight and uh, give it some better surface area for glue to bind to, and we'll get it glued back together. But that's not actually the problem. The problem was that the poor fellow owning this pipe couldn't clean it and wound up getting it clogged and could not clear it. And the reason for that is, you know, how do you think that is drilled? So just looking at that shape, you'd think, well, okay, there's a drill coming in, you know, something like that, and it's creating the air hole. Well, actually, that's how it's drilled. So if you follow that line straight across, you can see it's actually hitting the top edge of the mortise as it enters and it just barely has enough room to clear the bottom edge of the mortise. So it's drilled there, that's straight. Normally you'd think for that to be straight it would have to be something like that. So the problem with that is, and this is a problem with this pipe shape and it took me a while to, to really understand this myself, which is why I wanted to show you this. You put this on, how are you going to get a pipe cleaner in there? 
you know, there's just no way that if you extend this line here, you're obviously going to have trouble. And, you know, if you've got a shank extension that's that long, there's just no way you're going to be able to get that pipe cleaner in there. Not without a lot of fiddling, you know, and I, I think, I don't own any pipes like this, but I've worked on quite a few of them. And in some cases, I think the only way to clean the darn thing is to go in through the tobacco chamber and try to snake a pipe cleaner up. It's really difficult to get it to, to hit that. So I got to do some other work in the mortise because the owner uh, quite reasonably tried to uh, drill out the clog and they missed the, uh, the actual draft hole because they didn't know that you could take this off and that's probably for the better. So I got to fix that extra hole. I got to get rid of that extra draft hole. And as I do that, I'm going to try to put a little bit of a slope into the inside of this, such that the pipe cleaner will be guided. I don't know if it's going to work, but it's the only thing I can think to do. But I show you this as a cautionary tale. If you get one of these clogged, don't take a drill and go after it. You know, send it send it to somebody that can take care of it for you. It's not going to be very expensive just to clean it. It's going to be a lot more expensive to try to fix what you what you might break. So I thought you'd enjoy that and thought it would be a little educational. Uh, that sounds pretentious. I didn't mean educational. I mean, it might be, might be something that you can use. How's that? Anyway, folks, I've probably taken up enough of your Wednesday, and I'm just on a short break from work here. Uh, i got to get back to it soon. Oh, i got one more thing I'll show you. That's from my shop bag. <laughs> Darn thing started arcing on me the other night. I was going to clean up the shop on Sunday night. I turned on the shop bag, and there was all this noise and very clear smell of, you know, an electrical fire type smell. Uh, I think it's the brushes. I, I can't, there was nothing wrong with the windings. Everything seems okay. There's no burning on the rotor at all. Uh, so I, I pulled it apart. I ordered new brushes. And I'm going to, while I've got it apart, I might as well replace that bearing. Uh, assuming I can get the thing off. But that shouldn't be too much trouble. So, yeah, I was going to clean up the shop. I think I promised that on Sunday morning. And when Sunday night came, the, uh, the shop vac wouldn't let me do it. So. Anyway, I'll keep you posted on that. It's, it's a problem for me because I also, it's, it's the same thing that I use to draw the dust away from the belt sander that I use to make stems and I really can't make any stems right now and that's okay because I've got I just happen to have several pipes that don't need stems but we're coming up on a couple that do need stems and I'm gonna have to get that thing running <sighs> my wife when I told her that I was ordering the parts yelled at me and said go over to Home Depot and buy a new one uh, she doesn't understand several things about it. I mean, one is, I want a shop vac. I don't want a Craftsman shop vacuum or a rigid shop vacuum. Uh, I've been using shop vac for a long time. That's only the second one that I bought in my adult life. I'm pretty happy with the product. And unfortunately, they don't make them like they used to. Now they're kind of ugly. So I'd really like to save this one if I can. Uh, and I'd even go so far as buying a used one to get the motor out of it and see if I can resurrect it that way if the brushes don't do the trick. So There's really not a lot of moving parts inside of them. You know, and it seems kind of silly you know, to spend 100 I think it was like $120 for a new similarly sized shop vac. Um, you know, I got like, gosh, the bearing was like a dollar and the brushes were maybe three dollars and of course there's shipping involved but I'd much rather save it okay now I'm really gonna let you go <laughs> hope you enjoyed the chat guys uh, have a great rest of your Wednesday and the remainder of the week ahead I'll see you Friday night virtual pipe club Saturday 4 p.m. for the uh, giveaway live stream and I hope to see you at both of those 
Take care, and we'll talk again very soon.